In this first video we're going to go through and have a quick look at a general overview of Live and we'll also have a look at some of the main features of the Live interface. Now this first video is not meant to be a tutorial so it's just going to be a general introduction but the rest of the videos on this site will go into a lot more detail into every aspect of Live and the, uh, the version of Live which I'm using here is version 8 which is the latest version. Now Live has a very simple and straightforward layout but as with a lot of software programs it can take a little bit of time to get used to it but the more time you spend using Live then the easier this will become. And Live can be a benefit to anyone who has an interest in making music. So whether you're in a band or a solo artist or perhaps you're a DJ, a producer, a composer or a remixer or even if you work in the TV, theatre, film and game industries then Live has something to offer because it's not only a tool that you can use to record and edit audio and MIDI but you can also use it as an instrument in a live performance. So firstly if we take a look at the left hand side we have what's known as the Live Browser and this has many different uses. Firstly we can use it to search our computers and our external hard drives for any folders or files that we may like to use. And we can also carry out all of our usual file management tasks inside this Live Browser. So for example we can uh, create new folders, we can delete files, rename things and copy and paste etc. And we can also audition these audio files just by simply clicking on them. So if I want to click on a file, we can hear it play, then if I like the way it sounds, I can just click and hold the left mouse button and drag it into the live set. Now if we launch this clip, we can audition some different audio files and hear how they sound with this guitar part. If I also change the tempo of this uh, live set, then the audio files in the browser will also uh, change tempo and they will all stay in sync. Now the next section is the plugin section. And this allows us to use any audio units, plugins or VST plugins that we have installed on our systems. And once again, it's very easy to use. You just find the plugin that you want to use and then drag it into the live set. Next, we have the live devices section. And this has three folders where we've got the instruments folder, the MIDI effects folder and the audio effects folder. Now the instruments that you have will depend on what version of Live you've purchased and you can also buy these instruments as extra add-ons. Uh, we have the MIDI effects with various different MIDI effects that you can use and also the audio effects. And once again they're very simple to use, you just find the effect that you like and then you can drag it into the Live set. Next at the bottom we have the, uh, the Hot Swap Browser and we'll look at this in more detail in a future tutorial. At the very bottom down here we have a new icon which is new in uh, version 8 and this is called the Groove Pool and this allows us to adjust any parameters for any groove files that we've used on audio or MIDI clips. Now to give us more space in the browser we can click on this dividing line here and you'll see the cursor changes. Now if you click and hold the left mouse button we can drag this in and out just to give us more space. And to give us more space in the main view, so we can see more of the session view or the arrangement view, we can actually fold the browser away by clicking on this icon at the top. And that will fold, uh, fold away the browser. And then to reopen it again, we can click on the same icon, or we can click on any of these buttons here to jump to a certain location. Now if we move down to the bottom left hand corner, we have what's known as the info view. Now if you can't see this info view, then simply click on this icon down here as this will open and close the info view. Now this is a very handy feature as it gives us a brief description of anything in live that we hover our cursor over. So if we do forget what a certain feature does, then we simply move the cursor to that location and we get a brief description in the info view. And it's also useful for making notes. So for example if we've got a clip and we want to make a note about it, then we can right click, 
select edit info text and then down here we can add a note then the next time we move the cursor over this clip that note will appear now if we move down to the bottom of the live interface there are two views that we can select firstly we have the clip view which is what we can see at the moment but if we hit the shift and the tab key on our keyboards or if we click on this little icon just down here then this will take us to the track view now in live a clip is the main musical building block that we use to make our music and there are two types of clips that we can use there are audio clips and also MIDI clips and the clip view will show us the contents of these clips and it will allow us to adjust various parameters that will alter the way the sound is heard and also how the clip is launched so here we can see the contents of the base one clip which is an audio clip and if we click on this main A just here then this is a MIDI clip so we can see the MIDI information here and also the parameters that we can use to alter the way the sound is heard and how the clip is launched I'll just point out as well this song that we can see here this is one of the demo songs that you can get from the Ableton website so if you go to ableton.com uh, slash live packs then it'll take you to the live pack section which you can download and uh, the demo songs pack is just down here so now if we go to the track view then this will show us all of the instruments and all of the effects which are on different tracks so firstly for example if we look at the bass track at the top then we can see that this track has one effect on it which is the compressor now if we click on the drums track which is just below it then we can see this has a, a MIDI instrument which is the impulse There are two main views in live where we can do our work. We have the arrangement view and also the session view. Now what we can see here at the moment is called the arrangement view. And this is very much like the traditional music program that we've been used to in the past. Where we can click on play and the timeline will pass from left to right. And as it passes over these clips, it will trigger the clips and then we'll hear the audio that is produced. Now with this window is split into two parts. On the left hand side we have the clip area where we can record new clips, we can edit the clips and also arrange the clips and we can alter any uh, track automation that we may like to introduce. And on the right hand side we have the mixer section and you'll notice that the tracks they run horizontally. So we've got the bass track at the top, then the drums track and so on. Now if we hit the tab key on our keyboard or if we click on this little icon just here, this will take us to the session view and this is where we can improvise with these clips so we've got exactly the same clips as what we had in, in the arrangement view they're just laid out in a slightly different manner and so we can trigger these clips in any order that we want and this is also split into two sections the top section is the clip slot area where we can record new clips and insert new clips and the bottom section is known as the mixer section and in this view the tracks run vertically so you can see we've got the bass track on the left then the drums track and so on now one of the great things about having these two views is the fact that we can break free from this timeline that we've been stuck to in the past. So for example if you're in a live situation and you, and, uh, you go on stage and you play a song from the arrangement view then if you want you can take the song into a different direction by going to the session view and then starting to trigger some different clips. So if we just demonstrate this quickly, if we just click on play then the song will start to play then we can go to the session view and trigger some different clips. So we can bring in some bass, we can take out the shaker, bring in some tambourine and we can also trigger a whole scene of clips by clicking on these launch buttons here. So we can go back to the intro or we can go to the, uh, say this section down here and we can maybe stop the guitar from playing. Okay, so that's just one use of these two views. Now if I quickly delete all of this information out of the arrangement view, so now this time if I click on play there will be nothing uh, heard because there's no clips in the arrangement. Now what we can do is that we can actually improvise with the clips in the session view. Now if we were in a live situation again just for example, then we could go on stage with a whole session view laid out with these different clips and then we could start to build a song from scratch just by clicking on these different clips. And another useful feature as well is the fact that we can record these improvisations into the arrangement view. So simply just by clicking on this record button here, 
then all the improvisations that we do by launching these different clips they will all be recorded into the arrangement so we may like to uh, simply start with the bass pick some shaker some tambourine and then we can launch the whole scene if we want now if we go to the arrangement view now we can see those improvisations have been recorded into the arrangement view there are many different features available to us in live but one of the main features is something known as warping and this is the main reason why I purchased live because it allows you to work with audio files very easily and there are lots of different examples on how we can use warping and we'll look at some of these in the later tutorials but just to, for the moment just to give you an idea I've got a, an old 7 inch funk record that I've recorded into the computer and I've already gone through and warped the, uh, the beginning section and this will allow me to alter the tempo of this song without altering the pitch so if I uh, click on the launch button here for this clip we can hear what the song sounds like at the original tempo now if I turn warp on just by clicking on this button here we can see all of these yellow markers appear and these are the warp markers and these will actually allow us to adjust the timing of this audio file now I've also set up a, a, a small loop at the start so if I turn the loop on and if I launch this clip we can hear what this loop will sound like and I will also increase it to 120 B BPM from 88 BPM now just below this I've got a, a duplicate copy of that clip and it's just playing a different loop so now if I click on play ok now if we go to the track view for this track, this funk track so I can double click on the, uh, the top of the track or go to this icon just down here then we can see that I've got a VST effect on this now if I turn this on we can hear how this VST effect will affect the sound ok now, so now just so you get the idea of how you can use this in the song uh, I've got some uh, drum loops and some percussion loops here so now if I click on the launch button over here we can launch the complete scene which will play all these three clips at once now this style of music may not be to your taste but it just gives you an idea of what warping can do So now we've gone through a very quick overview of live and hopefully it's giving you some idea of what live looks like and also of some of the features that it can offer you. Now all of the videos on this website will go into a lot more detail into every aspect of live and if you do not understand something fully then please feel free to contact me. You can use either the uh, form on the website or you can contact me at matt at ableton live tutorial .com.